Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to do a landscape drawing. It's going to be a drawing of a sunset using mixed media. I'm going to use a combination of pastel and colored pencil. So let's get to it. I'm going to do this in two stages and I'm going to talk about that in a minute but let me say a few words about the materials. This is the paper that I'm going to be working on. It's a Fabriano toned paper, uh, paper called clay. It's a grayish, light gray paper. I'm also going to use a bunch of pastels. I have these soft pastel sticks. These are Kohinoor soft pastels. In addition to those, I'm going to use Kohinoor pastel pencils. And I also have some of these uh, Master Touch woodless pastel pencils. The brands are not that important. I'm going to uh, start with some pinkish tones and the reference is going to be in the description so that you can uh, compare the colors in the original to the colors that I created. My scene is going to be a little bit different both in terms of the um, composition and the placement of objects and also in terms of the colors. I don't want to get hung up on the exact colors because um, that would be a little bit too restricting. I'm going to put in some warmer colors here around the middle uh, because that part of the sky is going to be a little bit warmer and more yellowish or even reddish because of the sunset. And I'm going to have more of those pinkish tones uh, at the top and I even put, a, put in a little bit of light blue at the very top. Uh, so I'm going to have a gradual transition from these warmer tones in the middle around the sunset and then uh, cooler and cooler and lighter tones at, uh, at the top. And now I'm doing a lot of blending with my finger and um, by the way this paper is regular paper even though it's toned paper but it's regular paper it's a non-sanded paper so I didn't prime the surface just yet. Uh, that's what I meant when I said that I was going to do this in two stages. The first stage is just going to be me working in pastel and blending that in. Uh, after that I'm going to apply the clear gesso and only after that I will switch to the second stage which is going to include working with colored pencils. Right now I'm still playing around with colors adding some purplish and magenta tones and then adding a little bit of this reddish orange around the middle. It's a cadmium orange. I'm going to push that in with my finger again. Uh, your finger is probably the best blending tool when it comes to working with pastel. The only problem with it is that sometimes you need to blend smaller areas so the finger just can't really work very, very well in those um, for those smaller details. But in most other cases when you want to cover large areas it works exceptionally well, so my idea here was to cover the larger areas very quickly, establishing some of the base tones and values, and then refine the details later once I have the gesso in place and once I start working with colored pencils. For the tree line uh, and the river bank, I used a little bit of brown first because I thought that it would go well with those warm tones. But then I started adding some darker colors to it. I added a little bit of black to make it a bit darker and a bit of purple to make it a bit more interesting and to create a bit more contrast. Now the lower part of the scene is going to... Uh, I will try to match the upper part of the scene because after all it will be a reflection. It's a scene that, that takes place on a river but it doesn't have to be exactly the same as you will see the reflection in my scene will be quite a bit cooler maybe a little bit darker and duller with less contrast but we'll see right now i'm just playing around with colors adding a layer on top of another layer so once i have that blocked in <coughs> i'm just going to apply some clear gesso Clear gesso is an acrylic primer that creates a textured surface similar to sandpaper. I'm just going to apply, apply it bit by bit using a soft brush and blending it uh, carefully and thoroughly so that I don't have any of these uh, brush marks. Uh, 
Now you're probably wondering now, well, won't that smudge it? There will be a little bit of smudging, but not that much, honestly, because if you've blended the pastel uh, thoroughly and if you've uh, blown off the residue, it shouldn't be that easy to move. So you can see that there is a little bit of smudging, but most of the colors and most of the values are still in their place because the, the idea was not to, to work out the detail. I don't have to worry about the detail just yet. The idea was to block in uh, the, this, these larger areas to get things ready for when I actually start working on the details. This is what the surface looks like now that it's dried. You can see that when it dries, it, it actually dries clear. It's quite transparent, the clear gesso. I used a Winsor & Newton clear gesso. You can also use Liquitex or any other brand. And it works really well with pastels and also with colored pencils, as you will see. It'll give you a little bit more tooth so that you can, you can put more layers in and so you can have stronger, brighter colors. Anyway, now I'm going to start working on the details. Uh, I'm going to put in the sun here. And I'm going to use the brightest or the lightest colored pencil that I have, which is the white, the white colored pencil. So, as I've already explained, I've used pastels to block in these larger areas, because with pa with colored pencils that would be, that would have been quite a bit slower, and there would would have been more texture. It would have been a little bit more frustrating, but this way it was very very quick and I already had those base colors to work with. Now I can work on top of that and modify these colors a little bit. For example, in some of these areas at the top, I do have a little bit of those brush strokes, brush marks. I can soften that with this light beige color, maybe uh, blend that in a little bit to soften those transitions, uh, create a little bit more of a gradient. Uh, because now it's easier for me to achieve that color once I already have a base color underneath that is very similar to the colored pencil I'm using. That's why I'm not creating a lot of contrast and I don't have to um, put in a lot of work with a colored pencil to try to overcome the background color, which is a lot different than the colored pencil that I'm applying. I don't have that problem here. Here I'm putting in some suggestions of some distant hills or clouds that are of purplish color and finally once that is done i'm going to start drawing these trees i have to do a little bit of work on these now and the sun is already in place so now i'm going to be drawing trees and you know in comparison to the reference i'm going to change their size uh, their placement and maybe their shape to a certain degree because I don't really want to be bothered by trying to draw the exact shape uh, but you know they will be reasonably similar to the ones in my reference photo. I just wanted to add something about the drying time of the clear gesso. It should be probably no less than 10 to 12 hours. It's probably best to leave it for 24 hours because that way it will really harden and uh, you will get a really nice tooth. But I left it overnight, so uh, I was planning to make a break anyway. So I just did the priming, left it overnight and then continued with my work. Now, if you've been paying attention to the way I'm drawing this tree, you will notice something interesting. I'm, I'm using a black colored pencil for a lot of the shape of this tree. But at the top I used some slightly lighter colors. I used a Caput Mortem, which is a, a slightly duller reddish brown. I want this color because I want the... And I'm also adding a touch of cadmium orange as well. Because I want some of these warmer tones and lighter tones at the top. Because I want to make it look like the top part of those canopies is more influenced by that light source, that warm light source of the setting sun. And I want to have the bottom of the tree in the shadow. That, that has to be the shadow area, which is considerably darker, or maybe just a little bit darker. So that's a good idea to, uh, 
to create that contrast and here I had to go in first with the cadmium orange so that I would make sure that this part of those bushes and trees would look really bright or a lot brighter than those shadow areas. I want to make it look like this part of those bushes is really exposed to the light source and it's catching a lot of light, that warm light. And then I went over it with some darker colors to do a little bit of a, of a softer transition, more natural transition. I also see some light clouds here at the top and for those um, I used a little bit of light beige and then a touch of ivory colored pencil. I want to make, um, I, I don't want to create too much texture or suggestion of detail, just a few light barely visible clouds in the distance over there in the sky so not much to it just a few light smaller clouds and then a little bit of blending both with my finger and with my pencil now here if you look at those uh, shapes in the background which are of purplish colors I created an interesting effect there uh, you can't really tell whether some of those are hills or mountains or some of the lower hanging clouds which are a little bit darker and I'm fine with that I like those happy accidents as Bob Ross would call them because it gives um, it leaves uh, some things open for the interpretation of the viewer now I'm gonna slowly start moving on to the lower part of the scene here even though I still have a lot of trees to draw but I'm just laying the groundwork by establishing this uh, edge between the between the river bank and the the water where the reflections begin. The reflections are going to be interesting. I've done a number of videos on how to draw reflections in the water and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first I have to work a little bit more on these trees. I'm going to, I'm going to draw another one of those taller ones and uh, I'm just sort of dragging my pencil, creating small circular motions and trying to group them to imitate the, um, the texture and the overall shape of the trees, of the canopies of those trees. And of course at the top I'm going over those darker areas with a slightly lighter pencil and uh, then adding even more warmer tones using a cadmium orange at the top to, to try to suggest to the viewer that the very top of those trees is catching some of that warm light from the setting sun. Uh, this tree all the way on the left needs a little bit more work before I can add some of these warmer details to it but honestly I want these uh, trees which are further away from the center to look cooler and darker so I'm not gonna put in as many of those lighter details on those as I did uh, as I did on the ones which are closer to the middle now for the reflection area we're gonna have some interesting colors but first I want to add some more of these bushes in the middle and some of these are going to be uh, very light no, not very really light but much lighter colors in comparison to the other ones which are mostly black mostly in the shadow like uh, dark silhouettes against that brighter sky and these ones which are closer to the light source and more exposed to the light source I'm going to try to make them um, a lot brighter and make it look like the light is breaking through them so it's not such an easy effect to achieve but it's not that difficult once you get the hang of it and understand how the light source influences the drawing both in terms of the placement of the shadows and also in terms of the temperature of the colors. Just adding some of those warmer tones to these as well and I'm already pretty happy with their shape. So now I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the reflection area. The surface of the water is interesting because the part that is closest to the river bank appears to be a little bit foggy. There, there appears to be a little bit of haze there. 
So I'm going to try to create that slightly blurry effect where we can't really make out the exact shape of the riverbank and we can't really make out where the riverbank ends and the water begins. I'm also adding some uh, colors here around the middle to try to match the sunset area with some similar colors because ultimately when you're drawing reflections and I've said that many times in other videos you don't really have to worry that much about the exact shape about the exact edges and things like that you mostly want to focus on the general placement of your objects so that they mirror the image above the water in that respect and you also more importantly want to focus on the values of the objects above the water and then um, and then you'll be able to create a fairly convincing looking reflection. Another thing that I'm doing is creating these wiggly lines that kind of look like a broken reflection or a reflection that's disturbed by the movement of the water. Now going over this hazy area uh, or foggy area with a little bit of bluish and purplish tones and blending that with my finger I wasn't really sure how to blend these reflections here because when you use your finger it does blend pretty well but it also creates a little bit of um, a little bit of mudding which doesn't look that convincing so I had to go after after a little bit of blending I had to go back in and do a bit of refining by drawing some of these wiggly vertical lines imitating both the overall shape of the tree but at the same time trying to make it look like that shape is distorted by the by the movement of the water, by those tiny ripples in the water. And to further enhance the, the appearance of those ripples in the water, I'm using the a combination of a darker color and a lighter um, salmon color, which can give me some really clean marks and marks that are that stand in contrast against the darker shape of the of the reflection. Anyway, I'm uh, going in with this uh, salmon colored pencil, adding some lighter ripples on top of those darker shapes. And then just uh, working on some of the, on the reflections of some of these other smaller shapes. I did a little bit of experimenting with a couple of different blending tools there, used a bit of a tortillion. And now I'm just drawing the reflection with the tortillion because I can see that it's a lot lighter here in this area. So I don't even need to make very dark marks. I keep using a touch of that bluish, that's a light ultramarine for that, uh, for that foggy part of the river bank. And um, I just want to um, use it because I want to create that slightly bluish effect, but also kind of a blurry effect to, uh, to, to create a slightly vague shape of that uh, river bank and that's another reason why I'm not too worried about whether the line of, of the river looks uh, very straight or level. So I'm working on these reflections on the right side now. These trees are a little bit smaller and their reflections are a little bit brighter. I'm just doing a little bit of refining on the overall color and the shape of the reflections. I think they're starting to look pretty good. I only have one more tree to do here on the right side, but <laughs> I can see already that I didn't cover a, a small part of the paper here with clear gesso. So that's going to be a little bit more difficult to fix, but I can still work over it. It's a little bit too late to apply clear gesso evenly now. But it's still going to work, I think. Um, you can see how I'm wiggling my hand to uh, trying to create those broken shapes created by the movement of the water. And the drawing is now done. I'm going to put my signature in the lower left corner. And that's pretty much it. This is what it looks like. I hope you like the scene. Uh, don't forget to give me a like and comment. For longer videos and more content you should check out my Patreon because you'll find full-length narrated videos there.
Anyway, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.